you watched the most recent oversight tournament in Apex, you probably saw Tripods looking dominant for the first time in a major tournament. Yeah, we got first place, man. But was it just a fluke? Or is all that hard work they've been putting in finally paying off? In order to answer that, we have to go back to before Nick, Jet, and Deeds joined forces and became the Tripods. Nicholas Kolchev, or Nick Merckx, has made a name for himself as one of the biggest personalities in the Apex community. Ooh, 369, damn you fine, you suck me one more But Nick has been gaming long before he started playing Apex. His first experience competing in video games was in 2006 with the original Gears of War. When he wasn't at school or playing sports, he was grinding game battles non-stop. And eventually, he made it to the top of the leaderboards. And this is where Nick first found his passion for competing in video games. But at the time, competitive gaming was still in its infancy, and there wasn't much money to be made off of it. But then, MLG, which was the biggest gaming organization at the time, bought GameBattles.com. And all of a sudden, Nick and his teammates were being flown across the world to compete in the biggest Gears tournaments. Wow, the oh, no. what a throw. The entire crowd is going bananas right there. While they were a pretty successful team, after splitting the money between teammates and travel expenses, they just weren't making enough money to make a living off of it. After graduating from high school, Nick was confused on what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. Most of his family members went to college and were successful athletes. And while Nick was athletic himself, he preferred competing in video games. I got a really, really crazy family when it comes to sports. So sports was the norm. This gamey shit was like, nah. You know, my dad was the one dad and never, I mean, all my friends were cool with playing video games. My dad was never about it, man. I mean, it was get the fuck outside, go get dirty, go do shit. I mean, just typical standard stuff. It right. really was like that in my house, you know what I mean? But video games just weren't as popular as they are today. And his parents just didn't see a future career in gaming. He fought with his parents a lot. And it got so bad to the point that Nick's mom took his Xbox 360 and smashed it to pieces. Don't do that. That costs a lot of money. After that, Nick decided to enroll in community college. During this time, Nick was confused. He didn't know if he wanted to be an athlete, a cop, or a nurse. And he hated school. Instead of going to class or studying, he spent most of his time gaming. And if he wasn't doing that, he was either at the gym or watching videos online. And one day, after going down a rabbit hole of watching really messed up videos on the internet, I watched too many things and I just couldn't stop watching. I couldn't stop it. He became inspired to do something about all the evil stuff that was going on in the world. I watched, you know, and I see what this mom and this are doing to this kid, you know, and, and, and I'm telling you, I want to, I just want five minutes, man. So he dropped out of college, quit gaming, and left his family to join the Navy SEALs. Nick said that joining the Navy SEALs was one of the hardest, if not the hardest thing he's ever done in his life. I don't know if there's anything that can prepare you for that you kind of just you you, you kind of just you just gotta it's tough man it, it, it's a total kick in the nuts man while he was physically able to do most things he had a problem with underwater stuff every time he'd be underwater for too long he'd panic and pass out even when he tried his absolute best to push through it he'd pass out every single time because of that he was never able to become a member of the navy seals while he was allowed to stay on the base as a janitor for a while, he ultimately left and went back to college. He was right back in the same spot he was at before he joined the SEALs, and he was just as confused as ever. Around this time, he decided to get back into gaming. For a while, he was going to college and streaming games on the side, until eventually, streaming really started to take off, to the point where he was making enough money to drop out of college and pursue a gaming career full-time. Just like in real life. Copy that. Copy that. Oh, come on! This is when he really started to grind COD. Nick was grinding wager matches and GBs and COD all day and night. This is where Nick really started to grow his community on Twitch. Yeah, girl! But after playing COD year after year, he was getting bored of it. And in 2017, when Fortnite came out, Nick saw it as the perfect opportunity to try something new. Dirty. Shut the fuck 
Oh, oh my god, yo, you're the worst little kid that ever was spawned. Okay, shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh my god! At first, Nick lost about half of his viewership switching from COD to Fortnite, but Fortnite ended up blowing up in a way that hasn't been seen before in gaming. And this is where a large number of people discovered Nick Merckx for the first time. During the prime Fortnite days, Nick was most known for landing tilted towers every single game and dominating everyone. I'm about to get the shit beat the fuck out of this building. With how aggressive his playstyle was compared to other pro players, he was breaking records left and right. There's your fucking. There's your 55 with a win. But eventually, during season eight of Fortnite. Tilted Towers was destroyed. Nick and his chat watched in horror as meteors rained down upon Tilted Towers until it was no more. Bye bye, Tilted. No, right now? Bye bye, Tilted. No! And with the destruction of Tilted Towers came the destruction of most of Fortnite's player base, as Nick and a lot of other big streamers went back to COD to try the new Warzone. In the early days of Warzone, things were looking great. I mean, hey, if you're addicted to Fortnite and you're rocking it, it's your thing. No harm, no foul. But, uh, damn, Th this has got to be one of the best games I've ever played. I mean that. Nick's Twitch channel was exploding in popularity, and his YouTube channel was getting millions of views per video. But even though Nick was quite literally the biggest Warzone streamer at the time, after grinding Warzone for a while, he began to get sick of it. He was burnt out from playing so much, and it didn't help that cheaters and stream snipers were running rampant, making the game almost impossible to play. Yeah, I was, I was bro. He's, sm he's smoke grenading and then hacking through the smoke. Oh my god, this kid is just crazy. Get me? The developers tried banning as many cheaters as they could, but since Warzone's a free game, nothing is stopping cheaters from just making a new account. This guy has an 85 KD. 85?! Where? How is there no automated system?! So Nick mostly started making variety content. The few times he would upload Warzone, he'd be spectating other players rather than playing himself. He needed a game to reignite his passion for gaming. I gotta have fun doing what I'm doing. If I'm not having fun, I'm not into it. If I'm not into it, it's not the best me. If it's not the best me, I'm, I'm doing a disservice to myself. So with that being said, guys, listen, man. Point blank, straight to the point. I'm dipping from Call of Duty Warzone. And that's when he officially quit Warzone and started playing Apex Legends. Within the first week and a half of playing the game, Nick was already hooked. Apex Legends is more difficult than Warzone. It's aiming and shooting, just like Warzone. It's positional, just like Warzone. It's awareness, just like Warzone. All those things are across the board. But Apex has abilities, super fucking abilities and shit. And I think that's a big caveat that you can't ignore. I mean, the abilities, the timings, the, the possibilities are endless in Apex because of all the things that you can do. He started grinding ranked with one goal in mind, get to Apex Predator. I mean, I have something to grind for. I'm passionate about being competitive and stuff. I mean, you guys know me. I'm so competitive. Tank mode is top tier. I've been having so much fun playing that. I feel like it's a really, really good assessment of where you're at in the game. But he didn't want to just three stack with the best pros in the game and get pred for free. He wanted to earn it. You can jump on board with two, like, Apex pros and get kind of boosted. I haven't been doing that. I've been playing solo up until this point. Now I play with, like, Clocky, Tom, and Tim. So I'm trying to do it without jumping on the Apex guys train you know what i mean his old teammates didn't have the same drive for apex as he did they 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 ghost me all the time i'm asking him to get on nothing i, I say we're we playing nothing or are we getting on yeah 5 p.m then they don't show up 10 p.m then they don't show up i mean i'm not even hearing this man so he decided to solo queue and so eventually he found two players he meshed really well with they're both the same rank as me. All three of us were hard stuck 10K and we're trying to climb out together, man. I introduced to you guys in this video, Bebo and Deebs. While things didn't work out with one of the teammates, Nick meshed really well with the other teammate, Deeds, and they started to play together a lot. I still owe you that hand job. We're not going to make eye contact though, okay? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Wait, we talked about so, it, right? Where did we just go? Like, how did what? We... After some more grinding, Nick eventually hit Pred. Mm -hmm. I, you can't, okay, heart, heart. Oh, shit. Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! You did it! And now, he felt like he was good enough to start playing with other pro players. And sometimes, it ended up going really well. And other times, not so much. What are you? What the? What are you? The one 
are you two gonna do about it, huh? Just what are you gonna do about it? I'll snap you in fucking half, dickhead! I had no fucking idea. I had no clue. If you knew we were gonna die, what the fuck you doing? Who? You! Because both of you said to loot! And even though at first, Nick was the laughing stock of Apex. Hey, Nick, huge fan. Huge fan, bro. I love it when you average 170 damage and nail the bro. Love you. <laughs> he kept on grinding every single day, and because he had so much experience competing in shooters already, he improved really quickly. The point that pro players started to give him some recognition. It's just because we were the pro players, so they won't, uh, it didn't work on us, but it'll work on any other 10k. <laughs> Chad, you hear that? I know he wasn't talking to me specifically, but he said that we were the pro players. But even though he was getting respect from pro players, he was constantly getting disrespected by the rest of the community. Hate or not, opinion or not, it doesn't matter what any of you think, because I am. You know what I mean? Like, you can be like, oh, well, I, mean, I don't think he's that good, right. But I am. Oh, but like, he doesn't deserve it, right. But I did everything I had to do to get there. Oh, but he just gets carried by his teammates, right. In every game, in the history of my existence, right. I've had a hundred different teammates, been successful with all of them, but I'm the problem. <laughs> Even though he was getting disrespected by most of his community, he was determined to become a pro Apex player. He knew that he and Deeds were a great duo together, but they needed a third, and that's when Nick stumbled upon a great opportunity. Chad, the guy he's playing with is a potential third for LGS. Apparently his teammates don't want to play anymore or some shit. And they had an Apex Pro League spot. They qualified through Challenger. So, it, I mean, it would be kind of cool to have that experience on the squad. But there was one thing they needed. A name. And Nick had the perfect idea. The Tripods. Why are they named Tripods? Because apparently Nick has a pretty decently sized uh, penis. And it makes up half of his confidence. He has a nice piece on him. So he calls himself the Tripod because if you look at a human, it's like this. But then if you add a big penis to it... It's like this, and it's a tripod, and that's half of his personality, about 30% of his humor. And that is how the tripods were born. At first, like most new teams, they struggled. That's true. Yeah, we're last place. But they had potential. Deeds, Luda, and Nick are going to be a threat. They just need some more reps. It's all about just more experience. The reason why comp players are good is because they've been in those situations hundreds of times. It's all about more reps, and as Nick and them get more comfortable with each other, they're going to become a better and better team. And after playing together for a while and building up some chemistry, they started to do pretty well. And with Nick himself improving a lot as a player. Fuck with me! Shit, Fuck man. with me though! You can't get touched with zone one. Every every placement from here on out. Fuck with me! Fuck oh, with me! That was good, that was good. Let's go! He started to gain respect from some of the best Apex players. I can't. I honestly, I can't even. I don't think anyone believed that he would it would ever do that. Like he played that fucking probably better than I would. Honestly, no bullshit. But ultimately, Nick and Deeds just weren't meshing well with Luda, and they disagreed on how they wanted to play the game. So Luda ended up leaving Tripods. He was a good soldier. He fought long, and he fought hard, and he let that fucking thing swing. You know what I mean? I think that it's best for all three of us to, to just move forward, man. Nick needed to find a new third, and he had just the person in mind. Gent. Gent is arguably one of the best controller players in Apex. <laughs> oh! And Nick knew firsthand just how good Gent really was from getting carried by him in rank. True, true. Oh! You did not hit that. <laughs> Grab banner, move your ass. I know, I'm getting your ass. And this happened to be perfect timing for Gent, because at the time, he was having some problems with his current team, G2. I'm not gonna lie. Why are you by yourself? Follow me in rotation! Uh, You've done it twice now in a row! Uh, Fucking follow me! Stop walking around by yourself! Uh, follow me! We, we, we wouldn't have been able to capitalize on shit because you're so fucking far behind because you're in fucking La La Land. Dude, freaking La La Land, broski, and G2 is taken out. And Gent saw this as the perfect opportunity to join a new team. But there were mixed feelings from the community about the decision. While some people thought Gent was a great fit for the team and the move would be great for his career, other people thought it was a really bad decision for him. He already had two really good teammates on G2. And some people felt like Gent was leaving for a worse team. But at the end of the day, 
Chen was fully committed to the decision, and thus began a new era of tripods. Even though the three of them individually were great players, the biggest thing holding them back was the lack of leadership in the team. After seeing the impact that a coach like Raven had on TSM, Nick figured he'd try hiring a coach himself. But after getting into a heated argument with his first coach, Nick, you gotta be careful of these. I'm telling you right now, because like, people are gonna start noticing, and all of a sudden, the price and the stonks of these is gonna rise up. And then you're gonna have to pay him a lot more, so. Is that what happened to you and your two controller friends? Is that why you got dropped? Uh, you just gotta get used to that, honestly. Yeah, you, you need to get used to keeping your fucking hip shut, or, or <laughs> you fucking go somewhere else. <laughs> you can laugh all you want, I'm not fucking with you. Level two. I don't, even, I don't know what would go through your head to say something like that. That was cringy as fuck. At this point, I don't actually understand what I said. Just try and hide I, I can understand I that. And his second coach leaving in the middle of scrims. During the scrim, a couple nights ago, two games in, he dipped. He said that we felt like, this is a direct quote from him, he felt like we didn't want him there anymore. Nick decided to take matters into his own hands. He was going to be the leader that the team needed. And after studying how some of the best IGLs in the world consistently led their team to victory, don't get down here, don't get down here, do not get down here, back up, back up, back up, and practicing a bit himself, oh, go over here, guys, play on me, shut the fuck up, play on me, come here. He felt like he was ready to be the new IGL for tripods, but at first, things didn't go too great. We're just getting, we're, we're getting pinched from left and right. Swing together, swing together, boys. Man. No. And no audio, no tracers on these bullets, man. It fucking gets me killed. God. I'm just dead, bro. Oh, they're all on me, bro. I fucking bug. Holy shit. Listen, I don't mind you being confident about our game plan, but let's talk about it. You're not gonna tell us what the fuck we're playing. You know what I mean? I mean, nah. I mean, that's just how this is gonna go. Damn it, man! We fucking had that! I'm a little annoyed. What did you want to do exactly? You're not answering. What did you want to do exactly? Right now, the meta is considered like a lot. You need to have mechanical skill, and Nick just doesn't have that. Whatever I want. The tripods weren't playing well together as a team, and Nick's IGLing just wasn't up to par with the other pros. I'm fucking eating dick! Wait. But instead of giving up and breaking up the team within the first few months, they all decided to stick it out and get better together one game at a time. And after a couple more lackluster performances and failing to qualify for Pro League, Nick started learning from his mistakes and getting better every tournament. And all of a sudden, everything finally began to come together during the Oversight Tournament. Here we go, baby! Dark Zero dead! And drive on me, game one! Let's fucking go! Yeah, what's it? Not- On my left, I might just take the side, bro. Just kill this idiot, bro. He sucks. Come on, bro. God damn. Hey, 
Okay, GG, bitch. Tripods has been... Damn, they've been changing it. They've been changing the game. They've been changing it up. Nick doesn't have to play competitive Apex. With how successful of a streamer he is, he can just stream himself playing COD or any other game he wants and focus on spending most of his time with his family. But Nick competes because he loves it. No matter what game he's playing, he strives to be the best player he can possibly be. Passion. Imagine, imagine, imagine a millionaire. Sky does not have any reason to care about performance in this game or in his competitive performance at all. He has no reason to. What? But this, this man has more passion than like majority of professional players. Even though at times, Nick was the laughing stock of competitive Apex, he stuck through all the bad times. And now, he's reaping the rewards. And even though Tripods got their first win in a major tournament, it's still not enough for Nick. He's still trying to learn from his mistakes and become the best player in IGL he can possibly be. Every tourney this week, we, we, we played good, and even like the ALGS one, you know, we get like a four, fifth, fourth, third, and all this shit. It's like, yo, we're doing great. But I'm thinking about all the fucking big ass mistakes that we're still making. And it's only a matter of time. I think we're really gonna make this next land, but uh, you know, we're at this, hit this one out. But when, when ALGS kicks off again, man, we're gonna be in a really good spot. You know? I love it, bro, I love it. I love it so much.